Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brainbean here again, and today we're gonna to talk about five super simple things you can do to mod your keyboard to both improve the aesthetics and overall typing and gaming experience. So with that, let's get started. Secret Lab combines best-in-class materials, a plethora of finish options, and industry-leading comfort to provide the ultimate seating experience. With models for users of all sizes and aesthetic tastes, there's sure to be a chair for any setup. Click the link in the description to find out which chair is right for you. Before we get started, I wanna talk about who this video is for. Now, for those of you that watch my channel that are already very experienced with mechanical keyboards, and you're already into modding and doing all that kind of stuff, you're probably not gonna get a whole lot out of this video, although I'd love for you guys to watch to the end and hit that like button. But for those of you guys that watch my channel that are more just kind of into getting a gaming keyboard, or you're more kind of tiptoeing into the hobby, you got your first mechanical keyboard, and you're kind of wondering, where do I go from here to customize my experience? This video is for you. So the first thing we want to talk about is keycaps. Now keycaps is by far the easiest thing you can do to change the overall look and feel of your keyboard. And the best benefit of that is that most of the time it's super cheap and very, very easy to do so. Now there are a couple of things to consider when looking at picking up some aftermarket keycap sets. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your keyboard's layout is compatible with the keycap set layout that you're looking to buy. A couple of things that come to mind as things to be careful of is if you buy something like a drop alt or some kind of compact layout, a lot of times the shift key is gonna be smaller than your standard layout or some things like that, as well as like gaming keyboards like Corsair keyboards or Razer's older keyboards, for example, both of those have non-standard bottom rows, so you need to be careful that you check that before you buy a keycap set. Another thing you need to make sure is that the keycaps are compatible with the stems on your switches. Now, most mechanical keyboards these days use Cherry MX compatible switches, which is sort of that plus sign or that sort of cross design. You'll notice that it's very simple to figure out which one you use by just popping a key off the keyboard and looking at the actual stem of the switch. From there, it's a matter of choosing the profile, colorway, and material. And really, this could be its own video, so I'm gonna try to save you guys some time and just keep this as high level as possible. Most keyboards will come with standard thin laser etched ABS keycaps unless they state otherwise. And if your board did come with PBT keycaps, chances are you're gonna know it. In general, when it comes to mid-range keycaps, going with some double shot PBT ones is gonna be the way to go. And the only real exception here being the higher end ABS keycaps, particularly in the SA layout where you won't really find them in PBT plastic. But in general, those ABS keycaps tend to be much thicker and much higher quality. When looking to pick up a set of keycaps, there are a couple of places you should look. A lot of gaming companies actually have their own sets like Razer, Corsair, and HyperX, for example. And those tend to be pretty affordable and you'll know they'll work well with your keyboard if say you get a Razer set for a Razer keyboard. You don't have to worry about the non-standard bottom row and all that. Although these are gonna be not quite as nice as keycaps from some more notable keycap manufacturers. I'll leave a video link down below where I compared a bunch of gaming brand keycaps if you wanna look at those in a little bit more detail. Now my recommendation would be to look at something like Matrix Keyboards keycap sets or Alferior Keys. If you have a standard layout and you're looking for bright, interesting colorways with shine through at a reasonable price. If you wanna look at something a little bit more higher end, drop.com is a great place for GMK keycaps and a few others. The Kono store has some really great SA profile sets as well as KBD fans is always a good bet. You can also get textured and rubberized keycaps too. A couple of good brands for this are Taihao and Matrix keyboards. And these are gonna kinda go more on your more commonly used gaming keys like WASD or QWERDF. Typically these sets will come in QWERASD and F so you can accommodate a bunch of different games. But really swapping out a keycap set is literally as easy as popping off the old ones and putting the new ones on. And it's gonna make a pretty big difference from stylistically tying into your setup or making an impact just by kind of bringing in some more personality to the setup all the way to improving the typing experience. And for between 20 all the way up to 200 bucks, although on average I'd say a set's gonna cost you around 50 or so, uh, it does make a huge difference. Next up, we've got O-rings. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with them, O-rings are just simple rubber rings 
that you put on the stem of your keycap. And basically what that does is it reduces the overall travel time of the switch. It does not affect the actuation distance, however. And what it does is kind of act as sort of a cushion for when you bottom out the key. And so what it can do is it can slightly reduce the sound of your keyboard if you find that your keyboard is a little bit too loud. And it also kind of adds a little bit of cushion, a little bit of mush when you bottom out. Now you can buy these in a couple of different ways. They do offer them in different sizes. So if you want to reduce the total travel by, let's say 0.2 millimeters or 0.4 millimeters, they have different options there. And a set of O-rings is only going to cost you between five and 15 bucks, depending on what you go with. So it can be a really quick and easy way to change the feel of your keyboard. The third thing you guys can do is get yourself a good cable. Now, if you guys browse Reddit mechanical keyboards or you see build videos or things like that where people are using these nice coiled cables that are sleeved in different colors, you might be wondering what's up with that, where do people get them, and why do they use them? Well, they're about 90% or so cosmetic, and the main reason I would say people use them is because you can get them in different colorways that will really complement a set of keycaps. They're mainly used that way these days, although the aviator cable can function as sort of a hot swap between different keyboards for people that like to use multiple keyboards on their desk for let's say, you know, typing and gaming and you wanna swap them out real quick, you can have multiple of those end cables and just disconnect the aviator cable and plug the other one in without having to reach behind your desk and plug in a different keyboard. You can also use it to say, take it to the office and have another one there and just pop it in. Just kind of saves you some hassle, but again, 90, 95% of the time, it's just for the cosmetic effect that you get. Um, a cable like this is gonna cost you between 50 bucks to 80 bucks, maybe a little bit more if you go with a custom made cable to match you know, your keycap set or something like that. And companies I would recommend for this are Space Cables and Lux Cables. Lux Cables made me a really nice custom color way to tie in with my line build. I'll link that one down below if you wanna check it out a little bit more. But it's a really quick and easy way to sort of again, pop off a setup a little bit. Now the fourth thing you can do is something that I highly, highly recommend. And actually for me personally, once I did it on my first keyboard, I started doing it on every keyboard afterwards because I just couldn't imagine life without it. And that is modding your stabilizers. Now it's very, very easy to do. Just a simple clip and band-aid mod and lubing them up can make a massive difference in the experience that you get. And for those of you that use Corsair keyboards, or other gaming keyboards that have rattly space bars, for example, or a rattly enter key that can drive you crazy. Doing this mod is gonna improve your keyboard experience, the sound, all of it by a thousand percent. And it's very, very simple and easy. You don't really need a whole lot of supplies. You just need some dielectric grease, some band-aids and some like model snips that you can get for like removing models off sprues. Or you could even get uh, just some simple nail clippers even because you really only need to pop off a tiny bit or even some crappy scissors could probably get the job done. And this is very, very simple and easy to do. So on plate mounted cherry stabilizers, step one, remove the stabilizers from the keyboard. Step two, disassemble the stabilizer by just pulling it apart. It doesn't require any tools and should easily pop apart. Step three, identify the prongs at the base of the slider and notice that there's one on each side with a little tooth that's pointing down. Step four, just clip off both of the prongs that have the teeth at the end all the way at their base. Step five, lube the slider up with some dielectric grease. Now, some people do like to use the same switch lube for their switches on this, but your mileage may vary. Just lube the stabilizer thoroughly and reassemble. Step six is get a regular cloth band-aid and snip a couple of strips off of it to match the width of the stabilizer. You're gonna to wanna to apply this band-aid strip to the PCB just below where the stabilizer is gonna hit to act as sort of a shock absorber. And then you're gonna apply a thin layer of dielectric grease to the fabric side of the band-aid. This is easier if you can get to the PCB by taking apart the keyboard, but it's totally doable if you use like some tweezers and just kind of fish it in there if you can't disassemble the keyboard. Just try not to crease the band-aid. You do want it to be flat resting on the PCB. And when you reassemble that, you're gonna notice a massive difference. It's very, very simple and easy to do. Again, it doesn't cost you hardly any money. You can get dielectric grease on Amazon or Walmart or just about anywhere. It's maybe like five bucks. A uh, very quick and easy mod that will take you 10 to 15 minutes to do. And just to show you guys the difference, I'm gonna do a quick sound test of some unmodded stabilizers and some modded stabilizers on my drop and control keyboard. So they're basically the same board, just to give you guys a good accurate comparison.
And lastly, and the most advanced but yet still very simple way that you can augment your keyboard experience is by lubing your switches. Now there are quite a few keyboards for those of you that are still getting into this that can't do this and that would be anybody that has soldered in switches because you need to physically remove the switches to do this. So if you have a hot swappable keyboard or you're looking at doing a keyboard build, those would be the situations in which you can lube your switches. Lubing up switches is super easy. It's just a little bit tedious and very time consuming. Step one is to open up the switch with either a thin screwdriver or a switch opening tool, which I highly recommend you guys get, or you could even just use your fingernails and kind of muscle it apart, although that does kind of hurt after you do it about 70 times. Step two is to take the switch completely apart and disassemble it. It's actually easier if you do this all at once and just separate all the parts. Step three, get your lube and a brush. Now I like to do this by putting a small amount of lube in like the cap of a water bottle lid or even just a small container like a dish or something like that that you can rub the brush on to get extra globs off. You're gonna wanna dab your brush into the lube kind of fully saturating the bristles with it and then wipe it off on the sides to get rid of any large globs. Step four, begin applying the lube in a very thin layer to anywhere that plastic contacts plastic. Less is more with lube and you might not even really be able to see it going on, just don't glob it. Three very, very thin coats is the way to go here. I like to start with the switch housing first going along the edges, again, where the slider will rub against the housing and then go to where the spring is gonna rest in there. Next, lube up the spring and put the spring on the housing and then grab the slider. Lube the sides, keeping in mind where it's gonna be contacting the housing. For tactiles, you wanna make sure that you don't lube the tactile bump, as this is really gonna screw up the feeling that you're going for. Now for linears, it is okay to lube that because there's no bump there, so it'll just make it an even more smooth experience. Now reassemble the switch and click the casing closed and repeat this step however many times you have to do it, and that's it. The two most common brands you're gonna find are Crytox and Tribosis. They're all gonna follow pretty much the same convention in terms of the naming convention of the lube. So you might see something like 3204 or 204 or 203 or something like that. Your 203 or lower numbers are gonna be your lower viscosity for your tactile switches. And your 204s are kind of considered jack of all trades. And then 205 and up is gonna be for linear switches. Again, this is a little bit more advanced because you physically have to open the switches and it does take a long time to do this. For my 65% keyboards, I've done two of them now for lubing switches. I'd say it took me about two to three hours per keyboard, but the difference is night and day, guys. It's gonna blow your mind. And just to show you guys a little bit of a difference, again, uh, I've got pretty much the same switch in my drop control keyboard, and then my drop alt has the lubed switches and modded stabilizer. So you're gonna get to hear the difference between a completely unmodded keyboard and then the lubed switches and stabilizers in the, in the alt. So with that, I'm gonna give you guys a quick sound test. Well, that's it for the video, guys. I hope you found this useful. Again, this is really meant for those of you that are really starting to get into the hobby a little bit more and want to do something to kind of elevate the experience of your stock keyboard. And I think these are some really good places to start. Now, I know I didn't really cover everything in a ton of detail. And if you wanna watch some videos that really help go over how to lube switches, how to mod stabilizers in even more detail, Nathan from Teja Types has fantastic guides on this. I'm gonna link those videos on his channel down below as well as links to purchase any of the stuff that I talked about in this video down in the description below. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about you know, modding your keyboards or what areas you're looking to do next. And of course, be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, as well as you know, ring that bell because YouTube has subscribed 2.0 now and subscribing doesn't really do anything. But anyways, with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.